Matt Lenehan Boxing Social in association with Forge Irish Stout Empire Fight Store. I've been joined by Lauren Socola here in Champs Camp, a new home for you. Um, looking well today, so you get put through your paces by Joe Gallagher. It's never, I've said to everyone in here, it's never an off day in here. He's always working hard. But how are you feeling? You see him in good spirits and raring to go. Yeah, I mean, we've still got several weeks, so I'm not really, um, you know, mm -hmm. that, that pump, but I'm, you know, just working hard. Uh, yeah, you can see the atmosphere, you can see what kind of work we have to yeah. put in and stuff, but it's good. Talk to me about this environment, because um, this environment, we mentioned the gym, everyone always talks about it, it's a very old school gym. Even this environment we're sat in now, some of these weights haven't been, been around probably longer than I've been alive. Yeah. Um, why here? Why, why the move to Champs Camp? I know you've touched on it in a little, in a few interviews, but we haven't had a chance to catch up yet. Why here? Yeah, I mean, well, first and foremost, I think it's good to be around boxing. Um, obviously, with moving to Dubai and stuff, there's some good gyms out there, but it's not that same sort of British like <clears throat> mentality and savagery and stuff like that, which I think um, I need, especially for this fight, this move up in weight, uh, mm -hmm. and this last little chapter. You know, I'm 31, so I probably only got another four years. Maybe I don't want to wish retirement on myself, yeah. but you know, um, I know that this is coming to the to the to the tail end, so I just want to do it viciously. Do you look at that then? Are you looking at that already at that tender age, I suppose, of 31? Do you look at the a few years left kind of thing, tick these boxes and then I can I can sail off? Are you looking at that already? Well, it's more so I look at it in a way of like, it's when you see like sort of this is the reality of it, you can sprint finish as opposed to like it's a never ending marathon. It's like, no, I've got this period. Yeah. Let me put my order in. Let me do the stuff that I always said I wanted to do. Mm -hmm. um, not just in terms of um, accolades because the fact is I've done accolades and not in terms of money because that's not that's not really a thing for me anymore mm -hmm. but it's like I want to I want to see certain stuff from myself that always you know when I daydream about myself fighting yeah. and I see certain things but then when I'm watching the videos it's not nah, it's not really yeah. lining up so that's what I'm like I'm like you know I only got one last little bit I might as well um, you know do some of the stuff that I always daydream about doing and make it a reality so yeah 100% and when everyone knows your story as well from the come up um, to be where you are to achieve what you've achieved um, you know in, in many ways from that background you know against the odds yeah. um, leaving Sugar Hill was that a difficult decision for you or is it one that it was a case of you know what in my own head it's a short career I have to try this I have to do this why, why did, how did you come to that decision? Yeah no for, um, obviously me and him are still very good like yeah. as I said I, I never really have a bad relationship with any um, coach that I have or have we all just always keep it pretty professional mm -hmm. um obviously logistically it, it doesn't work if it doesn't work it doesn't work um obviously I haven't had a fight in a year wasn't out in America so yeah. we just said okay cool let's give it a little break and then you know um fortunately you know meeting Joe and going down that road this is yeah. this, this where we're at Joe's achieved a lot with a lot of fighters, um, yeah. domestically and on the world level, and still doing it now. And he sees the next crop coming through as well. And you're obviously at, at the top of the crop. You've achieved world title status. You're wanting to to get um, get another world title, another weight class. Um, what's been sort of what was the main factor to go with him? Because it's an important choice picking trainers and stuff yeah, like that. You've got you've got a gel, and it's not for everyone. Certain fighters don't fit certain trainers, but. You, you two have made that, that decision and you've gone with Joe. What, how come Joe Gallagher? I uh, Just looking at it, just realistically, in terms of, as I said, the flaws that I think I have are not necessarily even um, too much technical. Um, there are obviously technical flaws. Obviously, I'm not perfect, whatever. But, you know, as you said, I've done so much with... Um, well, not, I said then that I've been boxing for like 10 years now, so it's not really like I haven't got experience. I've yeah, yeah, been to yeah, Olympics sure. and whatever. But... The trajectory of I shouldn't have got to Olympics, shouldn't have British Commonwealth European World, but I did it and I did it uh, quickly and in, and in great um, fashion um, for the most part. But then some of the stuff that happens in my fights I don't like. I think a lot of it is down to the way that I train or mindset stuff more than like yeah. um, ability because it's like anyone that knows me, anyone that see me train, anyone that's seen some of my fights or see me in sparring, yeah. you can see the stuff that I'm able to do but it's translating it on a day. So I think a lot of it is about uh, the mindset with um, Joe. Joe yeah. doesn't care how much I've made up outside of the ring. He doesn't yeah, care yeah. what I've done in the ring. He doesn't, it's just, you no, know, do this work, do this. And when I'm, for example, I'm sparring and I do something that, you know, we don't like hold at the wrong time or whatever else, yep. he's gonna just like, you know, and, and, it, and, it, and it 
it's, it's just internalizing that so that in this next fight it's going to be obviously in Poland against a you know a good puncher and a um yeah a, like a sort of a, like a good fight style where I won't be able to get away with Poland especially out there nah. do you know what I mean so uh, I need to kind of have it drilled over and over and over yeah. and then with the next ones it's like it's it's pretty much just he says it how it is and I and I and I, and I can work yeah. for that. All fighters, obviously you guys are the warriors going out there, people pay to see you and it is life life and death, you know, one punch can change everything. But in terms of criticism over the years, for, for what you've achieved, do you feel like sometimes you've been unfairly criticised? Or do you, or has it got to you at some point where you're like, look, I, I know I, I want to do certain things, but this has just happened. Or how, how does it sort of marry up in your mind? Yeah, it marries up all right. As I think when I put in good performances, I've got good reviews. And when I put in bad performances, I've got bad reviews. So I think a lot of it is quite um, reasonable, but at the same time, for me, obviously, I live my own life. So I know every time I try my best, and if it's great, it's great. And if it's not, it's not. I'm giving them my all. So when, I'm, when it's finished, the only thing I feel is like, ah, damn, I wish. Like, how do I, how do I work? I, I never, like, cry about it or nothing like that. It is where it is, even with... Um, losing my world title it's just I never cried I just said oh fuck, damn yeah. and then what do I need to do to beat Chris in a rematch or win this next fight it's just keep it rocking and rolling you never make any excuse just cry like you said they cry come then you took your defeat like a champion it was a big night big occasion um, what have you learned I suppose in defeat everyone always says a loss is a lesson and all that you know jargon and cliche talk but did you take anything away from that where you go you know what that will never happen again or I should have done this yeah, a few things, a few things. Uh, some of them I think are going to be necessary for this particular fight, especially, I mean, I boxed in Bournemouth, 15,000 uh, in yeah. the stadium. It was, you know, great to be part of that uh, occasion. Um, oh, here now I'm going to Poland and to... Lions then again. Right, and so there's a few things that I want to sort of take in. And I think, as I said, mindset-wise, I think for that one, I was very, like, just... I don't want to say mm, nonchalant, but it was just very much, like... It's a matter of fact, like, okay, I'm going to go too, Were you too at ease? Were you too maybe in the mind? Was yeah. there, you know, when you go into a fight, you must have it where there's like, there's that, there's that danger element, and there always is. Yeah. But did you almost go in there thinking, yeah. you know what, yeah, I, know, I, know, I know this guy. Right, right, and obviously that's a mistake I would never make again. But it's, you know, like I said, it's, it's, it's a lesson that I deserve to learn because, you know, um, that's what happened. So I think definitely it was just very much, mm, la di da da, I'm in, whatever. Yeah. And then all of a sudden, boom, like, it's, it's oh, done. fuck, yeah, the fight's done. And, you lost, so it's very much a thing of going in there and getting it done, and um, yeah, being very intentional. I think is is another mm -hmm. one. Do you think at some point? I know you've got this opportunity to become two weight world champion, and like you said, you're going into that lion's den again, away corner. And I know Joe's relishing that because he wants to bring that 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 spite out in your away corner, and you know, go in there and do a big job. But do you have ambitions? I know you're not looking past it, so I'm saying this with all due respect. Do you look and go, you know what, we, we'll, do, we'll run that back at some point with Chris. Do you want the rematch or is it, if it happens, it happens? Oh, yeah, I, think that, I think the fight will happen in the future. I think it's um, definitely going to be a bridge weight fight. I think it depends really on Chris because obviously I tried to get the rematch. It never ended up happening. But I do think that at Cruiserweight once, um, Chris and Rap will box each other. There won't really be much there in terms of um, opportunities. I mean, that, unless they want to box maybe dry on a matchroom show or something mm -hmm. like that but I, I think I'd much rather box me at Bridgeweight you know able to eat what they want um, in preparation for a fight that's whoever wins out of yeah. Christian Rappel because I'm, I'm not 100% sure I think Chris should win but I, I'm, I'm not 100% sure so whichever one of them wins will um, probably come up to Bridgeweight as long as I win my fight You still want the React Power fight? Is that still yeah, left? I think that either one of them um, I think that obviously domestic fights are, as we saw with me versus Chris me versus Chamberlain me yeah, so, you know, all of these fights are big fights um, and they're probably the best fights to get your teeth stuck into. Mm -hmm. um, um, so I would prefer Chris won and then we could run it back. But yeah. if he did, for example, lose, it's not like, oh my God, I just want Chris. Yeah. Like, it don't mean nothing to me. Does it? Does the position you're in now, does that maybe, I don't know, because you're always hungry, but does this, is you like more hungry now? You've got maybe this challenger mentality. So knowing you get a belt, I, I don't know, but you know, you, you're always, you're searching for more, but when you've not got a belt, it's that, you know what, I want to be, I'm, I'm world champion. I need to be walking around going, you know what, I'm Lawrence O'Coley, world champion. That's me. So have you got that fire now to go there and be like, you know what, this is, I'm more, more motivated than ever now because I, I need to get that title? Yeah, I think so. Um, but I do, 
believe obviously when I win this fight that I'm gonna kind of keep that, especially for this last chapter. I think I was very much like a world champion, rich, da, 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 whatever. It's all good. Like right yeah. now, it's like ah, oh, I prefer being world champion to not being. But I tell you that, so um, yeah. I'm gonna definitely get it and then um, go from there. Do you still have ambitions of doing heavyweight? Yeah. Everyone always talks about you and go, Lawrence is going to move to heavyweight and rah, rah, rah. When you see domestically now, we saw a great fight in the week in uh, Fraser, Fabio, and I know you'll be looking further afield uh, as well past that, but everyone's always talked about that with that knock, that, that, that punch that you've got, yeah. which could put out a horse kind of thing, mm -hmm. that you will eventually make that jump. Is that in the distant future? Or in I a couple of it really depends on how um, this fight goes. Um, obviously, I still have to make weight for this. Yeah. I'm heavier than the limit currently, but um, I'll, I'll, I'll make that weight. I've still got six, seven weeks. Um, but it depends how I feel in there. If I still feel, oh, I've got more to put on and whatever yeah. else, then I'll um, make the transition a, a bit quicker because I don't want to be in a situation again where the weight is, a f is, a, is even a small factor. I want to go in and just always feel um, pumped and, 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 and strong. Has that been a factor for you before where you've felt like... You know, I need, yeah. I need to, I need to bounce from this because you're a big dude. Like, I mean, you can walk around and do everywhere. Everyone yeah. thinks, but has that been a thing for you before? You've been like, fuck. Like, Definitely, but because I've always made weight. For example, when I was cruising, I always made the weight, so I was never, I, was, I always used to just take it for granted. Like, I make weight, put on all the weight overnight, and then I've gone out and won, 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 won. So when I didn't win, I was just like, oh, what, like, hmm, is that like, especially where there was such a long time between the Chris fight and me fighting again. Yeah. It's like. I'm not losing 20, 30 kilos to um, come down to cruise weight yeah. again. It's not going to happen. So um, we can, I can do 20 and get down to yeah. um, um, bridge weight bridge or whatever. Yeah. But um, actually, no, not, not 30 kilos. If I, was one, I don't want to say what I was wearing, but I was, I was yeah. heavy. Like, do you know what I'm saying? So I'm not going to get the, all the way back down to cruise weight again. Um, but bridge weight is like, a, is like a reasonable one. And I think happy medium for you. Happy medium. That? And I believe once I do it this time, I'll be able to do it better the next time, you know, I ain't had a fight in a year, so I'm just trying to go in there, just be very um, clinical yeah. and, and quite um, vicious, to be fair. You look, you're looking forward to this, aren't you? You can tell that you're wanting to get back sort of where you belong and put on a destructive performance. Yeah, and it'll be good for me anyway, just to, to see what um, I'm like with the additional weight and stuff like that, do you know what I mean? Because I, yeah. I felt like in the last few years, like in the gym, I'm punching so hard and I'm so explosive. Yeah. And then on the day, um, it was like when I boxed David Light, like I can't keep this little guy up, like because cruise weights are quite small. When I look at them, uh, I was like, I could, I could barely keep him off, and he's not like some crazy whatever. Yeah. And then same with Chris, it's like Chris is pushing on me, and I'm like, oh, it's like ah, he feels like stronger than most. Like you know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. So. And I know David Light's not all that strong as much as, you know, he's, he was undefeated. So I just felt like I was losing a bit in in, in, in those fights, like in terms of my physical attributes. Yeah. So, um, yeah, we'll see. Well, look, moving away from that, um, <laughs> I know you do a bit of music and you oh. know that. And you, have, you, have you got anything going on at the minute? No, anything cooking? Or are you, no. are, you having to take, are you having to take a back step from doing all that at the oh, minute? Yeah, like, that's been like years. But I think I might do one, like, you know, obviously with this win, I might just... Just a celebration kind of like uh, track and then go yeah. from there. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I think so. I think I, think I would have earned it. Yeah, yeah, 100%. Yeah. Well, look, you got a message for the fans, the people who stuck behind you even through all the hard times and uh, who will be supporting Lawrence O'Coley in Poland to become yes. a two weight world champion. Yes, thank you. Thank you again, so, you know, I mean, all the fans, all the messages, the people that see me on the street and tell me, you know, <laughs> I'm going to get it back and whatever else. So when we get to May, I'm going to do it. Hackney, Nigeria, we're going to have a world champion again and we'll go from there. 100%. Lawrence O'Coley, I appreciate you giving me some of this time um, at Champs Camp. Um, nice to see you down here and we'll catch up after your fight. All good, man. Let's get it.